men of the foremost nations to whom the people of Israel come. Now moving on to the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 1. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Let my will be lost in thine. Now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you know you are my strength and my redeeming. Amen. E, the theme, the thought, the subject, the topic, us and illusions, excellence and ends in the vineyard. I'll be trying this morning to weave together the Ministerial Alliance's theme of excellence and the brilliance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with laboring of love in God's vineyard. It is my hope that you will leave from here this morning mindful from your vantage point of societal illusions, discontented with complacency and energized for labors of love. Please pray for me. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have a dream. I have a dream. Amen. Amen. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, what else do you have? <laughs> Welcome all to an opportunity to check ourselves for our actions and our inactions. We are here today to commemorate the life of a man who did what most assume is a rare impossibility. One who measured his life by the love of mankind. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The man who in 1963 asked us to dream. Yet, if we are real with ourselves, if we can honestly say that we can do more than dream. We can do more than await on another king-like leader. We can do more than seeing we shall overcome. We are not inclined anyway these days to march for miles, to get arrested, to get a beat and a scarred up body, to offset a scarred up soul. Nor are we inclined to get assassinated. I hear you thinking, come on, come on. be real, Mr. Perry. We live in a complex world that often requires us to compromise so as to smooth things over. We live in a complex world where entertainment figures get big bucks for temporarily titillating us while doctors, teachers, social workers, lawyers, and ministers deal one-on-one -on -one with individuals to stimulate our individualistic well-being, arguably for naught in comparison. We live in a complex country that has no official religion, yet we've never elected a president who was not Christian. We live in a complex context where we are aware of the high numbers of unemployment and the low numbers of adequate education. Amen. We are aware that the highest numbers of chronic illnesses are in minority communities, and that parenting skills have sunk to a devastating low level. We are some mighty aware people. Lest we forget, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was aware of comparable atrocities in his era. He was aware of Jim Crow restrictions on the use of public facilities. He was aware that his children could not attend the same schools as the white students. He was aware that non-whites could not sit on the front of public buses. He was aware that a particular race of citizens 
would not be served at the counters of Walgreens and Woolworths. But Dr. King's being aware catapulted him into a war. Something had to be done. Something had to be fixed. And somebody had to do it. Don't go out this morning with any illusions or false perceptions. Dr. King did something about inequities. His charismatic talent of inspiring others with insightful words is just one reason we celebrate his short life. He was able to transform, to intertwine, to reiterate, to reinterpret, and translate the desires, hopes, fears, and needs of oppressed people. Dr. King's sensitivity to the absence of social justice, his abhorrence with the prevalence of man's inhumanity to man, legal segregation, bigotry, lawlessness, etc., etc., and his love for the common person allow him to dynamically transpose into illuminating rhetoric for the world to hear the traumatic conditions of certain citizens. Thank God for the media during those times. Several analysts have credited the imprint and the visual images of the atrocities. For example, during the march from Selma to Montgomery, the college students in North Carolina. The All right, Kathy, uh, I don't know how you're going to guess. I don't either, but I'm going to try. Who they are, but who are they? I think bachelor number one is a WWF wrestling champion. Or any of the... I'm guessing was turning into a rabbit before yeah. I died. Now, bachelor number three I'm having some difficulty with. I thought at first it were a fly on a windshield, but... Uh, then, as you begin to relieve yourself, I just thought perhaps you're Quasimodo. No! You're a Frankenstein. No! And you're, a, you're no. dead. You're coming back to life. He's frozen in ice because oh. he was a... Oh, a Neanderthal. Yes! Yeah. I going to work out. I going to work out on the real availability. If we wait for itself to work out, it will never be worked out. Come on, come on. You said a lot. Today's scripture passages give us the same message. Complacency is out of place, and paying attention is imperative. Amen. In the book of Amos, we are told the worth of our church songs, our offerings, and our worship services when compared with justice. The former become totally insignificant when compared with justice. Amos warns us not to turn justice into poison, nor the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. The book of Hebrews reminds us to seriously, seriously pay attention. But what does paying attention really mean for us? Well, I think I know what it does not mean. Paying attention does not mean grunting in disapproval at Abramoff's appalling atrocity, Alito's alleged affirmation, Enron's egregious error, Martha's mammoth misguidance, or the White House's wailing willingness to whisper when we can write a letter or we can make a phone call, for example, to the very political officials present here today about our being disgruntled. <laughs> Paying attention does not mean calling your friend and complaining about a global atrocity when we can help those and lobby for global change. Paying attention 
does not mean being glued to the television and merely watching the French race riots, the high stoning ritual pilgrimage stampede, or the Katrina aftermath on the thousands of homeless without doing something for those affected. Paying attention does not mean going to church every Sunday or simply saying a prayer and then driving from the church parking lot gazing at the poor homeless. According to the Holy Bible, woe to you who are complacent and who feel secure. Woe to you who are not paying attention. Woe to you from whom the lyrics from the Broadway musical and recently debuted film, Rent, applies. The musical and movie raises several relevant questions of us concerning how we measure our lives. It insists throughout that we measure our lives by love. I liken it to the old saying, quote, the love in your heart was not put there to stand. Love is not love until you give it away. One way to avoid going out this morning with any illusions or delusions is deliberately paying attention to avenues of devoting distinct deference to divine difference. Paying attention means doing as Dr. King, who dared with dignity and distinction to destroy discrimination. There's no doubt that Dr. King did not let political bigwigs, nor his personal political opinions, ethnicity, nor his religious adherents stop him from reaching beyond his comfort zones. Obviously, Reverend King knew the truth and the wisdom behind the Nigerian proverb, fine words do not produce food. He knew that food was in the fields and vineyards, not in mere words. When will we start producing food? Yeah, listening to Dr. King's words is nice. Reading his legendary speeches, that's fine. Going to King commemoration services, like this one, yearly in early January, that's all, that's all very good. But just doing that won't produce food. Like those annoying sitcom repeats, and that even more annoying pink Energizer Bunny. We have got to keep going and going and going and doing and doing and doing. As Dr. King says, and, and I'm quoting, we've got to keep on keeping on in order to gain freedom. It would be fortunate if the people in power had sense enough to go on and give up, but they don't do it like that. It's not done voluntarily, but it's done through the pressure that comes from the people who are oppressed." End quote. Therefore, those of us who are unemployed, those of us who are women, those of us who are short, those of us who are ugly, those of us who are not heterosexual, those of us who are poor, those of us who are black, those of us who are Christian, those of us plagued with a disease, an infirmity, or a disability, we've got to stop celebrating the past and start doing in the present for the future. I'm convinced somebody's hearing echoes of Dr. King today. 
Somebody in here wants social justice to prevail. Somebody wants to be assured that every vote 